Hey fellow woodcutters, Topsaw here. Really quick wood project today that could be done on any scrap of pine you have laying around or any scrap of wood. It is a trivet for a hot plate, so you could put a hot pot down on a tabletop. We did it on the CNC router, but you could do it with a regular handheld router and a half inch ball end mill. Let's go ahead and get started. So go out into the forest is where you want to start. Cut down a pine tree or any tree that needs to come down. Once you knock that tree down, try not to smash anything. And then you want to buck it up into lengths that will work on the mill. Uh, I think I'm cutting this in a 13, which works well on my wood miser mill. So it's all limbed. And then you want to buck the logs up. Once they're all bucked up, find a trailer and some sort of equipment with a grapple so you can load them, transport them to the mill. Um, and then once they get to the mill, unload them and then start milling them into boards with the Woodmiser LT15. And then once you have the boards out there, you want to let them dry for an inch per year on diameter. Once that lumber is dried out, then bring it into the wood shop and you want to start the surfacing process. You want to plane it on the top and the bottom to a certain thickness. After that, you want to joint one edge to get that edge straight over to the table saw to rip the other edge parallel and straight to the initial one. You want it six and a half inches wide for this project. If all that just seems like too much time and expense, uh, just go out and buy a board at your lumber yard or use a scrap laying around and end up with a six and a half by six and a half square. Okay, let me run through how I'm gonna program this on the CNC. I'll try and do it as quickly as I can. This is Mastercam X9. I know not many people use this software. It'll give you an overview of kind of how the CNC works. So what I did is I drew a square. Um, I started right here by setting up my stock. My stock is six and a half by six and a half, and that's the thickness of it. And that's that red square. And then in here, I drew a six by six inch square, and then I offset that in a half inch, and I use that for the center of my radius. Then I drew these circles from both corners and then I cut them all off. So that's kind of the end of the geometry portion. And now I'm gonna do the tool pathing. The tool pathing is how I tell a tool to run these lines. I'm gonna select that, that, that. The order I select them is the order they're gonna get run in. And I have those six arcs all selected. And then I'm gonna go through different settings here. And I'm gonna start up here with tool I'm gonna use, I'm gonna select the tool. This is actually a half inch ball cutter. So I have my cutter all set. And then this is a feed rate. This is inches per, mi uh, inches per minute. How fast is traveling in the XY plane? A good is about a hundred and a standard for plunge rate is usually setting that about half the feed rate or 50. So that's a, this is in the category of feeds and speeds. I have those settings. Uh, then my cut parameters is where the cutter is in relation to direction of travel. So here, if I'm traveling this way, it's on the left-hand side, right? And I can set that here. But on this project, I'm actually going to turn it off so that the cutter runs right down the center line. So it's a half-inch ball end mill. Half of that will be on the left, half will be on the right. So it'll take a quarter off each side of that line. Depth of cut is going to be how much it takes off on a certain pass. Uh, the maximum is the diameter of the cutter, so I'm going to set this more like to 0.4. And then if I go 0.6 deep, it's going to do that in two passes. In the, in the video of it running, you'll see it do it in two passes. Lead in, lead out is these cutters are designed to cut laterally, so if you want it to enter the part outside of the part, it would be a lead in, lead out. There's really no place for it to do that, so I'm going to turn that off. And then tabs helps you hold it down, nothing to do there. And then I'm gonna call all these measurements absolute. And then I'm gonna call my depth, how deep it goes in there, a negative value, it's a negative 0.6. And that's kind of it for programming all of the cutters. It's pretty interchangeable on different softwares. Next thing I wanna do is verify it. So that all looks good. So I hit G1 right here, which is a post that converts all this vector information into the numeric code. The numeric code is actually what's getting run on the computer. And here's all my lines of code. You can see it's a pretty short program, 68 lines of code. All right, let's go out and run it now. So I have a wooden bed on the CNC router. There's that half inch ball end mill. I just use wooden cleats to hold the project down. Then I zero out the bit and then we're ready to hit start and it's gonna to start to run. You'll see 
it has that recorded origin set in there, and then it's going to travel over to our part and start cutting that first arc. So you can see it travel here, plunging down. There's one pass, and then here's the second pass. So that was set under depth of cut. It's going over to the second arc, one pass, and it's going to lift up, travel over, and then do its second pass. All right, that's eight times speed. And then once it's all done running, you always Z the bit up and out first. So Z up, move the bit out of the way, pull a board out, flip it over like a page in a book, and then you're going to run the same program all over again. And that's where you're going to get those peak through windows. So you could see it here. I think the board was 0.8 thick, and then our depth of cut was 0.6. And then that overlap is how you get that that look through design there. You can design it any way you want. When you're all done running it on the CNC, over to the tabletop router and round the edges, either on one side or both sides, keeping fingers far away from the cutter. Never use any of these tools unless you've been trained in them, uh, and safety always has to be first. It has to be your number one priority. Please comment below with any thoughts you have on this project. Great traditional wood project, great CNC project, great way to get a lot of students a Mother's Day gift when you forgot ahead of time and you got to get it done in a few days. Kind of joking at the start with how we get all of our wood. It's just what me and the students love to do is cut our own trees down and mill them out, make them into lumber and make stuff. But really easy project. You could just use any sort of scrap you have laying around. New to the channel, think about subscribing. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.